put in perspective. Was he underrated at the time when the album came out? Only because I want to say Ain't No Nigga wasn't out yet. Ain't No Nigga was a summer, summer 96 thing. Foxy yeah. Brown put Jay-Z, oh my God, another Clark Kent connection. Yeah. It, listen, any female that was rapping the way she was rapping on a song at that time was people were paying attention like, yo, Foxy killed that shit. And everybody says, oh, Jay wrote that for her. Nah, she wrote that herself. I didn't know she, that. He wrote that. Nah, that was her. She talks about it in, in, the, in the, the the making of reasonable doubt. The, the, the documentary they had. Jay told her go in the room, write your verse. She heard Jay's verses, and she was like, "Oh, this nigga's trying to kill me." So she says she had to write some ill off the wall shit. She was sixteen at the time, so she was like, "I'm going against a grown dude." She's like, "I gotta, I gotta try to come correct on this." This is my first opportunity. I'm not going to let this fuck, fuck up. And she delivered. Foxy delivered, man. She killed that verse. I'm sorry. I forgot about that, actually. I did know that she wrote it because she heard it. I still don't believe that she wrote that whole shit, personally. I, 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 know, it, I, I don't know. But. It was so polished. So she was doing some ill shit at 16 years old, 15 years, by the way, to be writing some shit like that, first of all. And second of all, Foxy Brown was on I Shot You. Yes, with LL Prodigy, Keith Murray. Yeah, Fat Joe. Not, not to the, not to say that she stole the show, but she did. But it was an L verse. That verse was L. I want to say all they all killed that man. But I, I I love I lean more towards um. Of course, L and Prodigy's Prodigy's. No, damn, I can't. Nah, Keith Murray verse. <sighs> I got them all before Foxy, which is crazy. But go ahead. <laughs> who, who? Prodigy and Keith Murray, Mob Deep and um Death Squad. Yeah, they had a beef. Yeah. I didn't know that. I just know Keith Murray is a bugged out dude, and I love him. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Keith Murray. <laughs> for yeah. He's, he's He's a real dude, bro. I just I love him for being authentic. For people. <laughs> you don't have to know anything. Just Google Keith Murray. He was <laughs> yeah. crazy. He was who you wanted. To, like, he was, again, cartoon character, comic book character in real life. He's hilarious. Keith Murray was nice, bro. Lyrically, he was nice. Niggas sleep on Keith Murray, bro. He was nasty. I'm here to make a dollar out of 15 cents. Yo, <laughs> let my balls. <laughs> we said, cool. Let my snacks say my toy and taking this shit. My style is all that. Big bag of chips with the dip. Fuck all that ignorant shit. shit. Yo, man, he killed that. I shit. represent intellectual <laughs> violence. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he set that off right. But anyway, I um, back. Represent back intellectual violence. 1996 was too ill, man. It was just too ill. But Foxy was, she was on that song, Fat Joe, Keith Murray, Prodigy, and LL Cool J. And Foxy kind of stole the sh not stole the show. I can't say that. But she was the only girl on the song. So it was like she's gonna stand out. Yeah, she represented, she did her, she held it down. And this is eight, nine years after Roxanne Shante, MC Light blowing up, um Queen Lativa blowing up. Um, because of that, of oh, in between that time, I'm trying to, to be respectful. I don't know a woman, Lauren Hill in '96 was blowing up. '96 was just a nice. tremendous year. '95, '96, it was it was Lauren Hill. MC Light was not big like that. Not in '96. Uh, yeah, MC Light time was it, uh, it was it faded. So yeah. 96 you had Foxy, you had Lauren Hill, you had Kim. Um, right. Queen Lock people were still doing music. Um, yeah. Salt and Pepper had a hit with a man. And, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. It would, they had hits. Yeah, I know. Oh, I love Salt and Pepper. Don't get it twisted. But lyrically, they weren't spitting with Fox, the Foxies, the Kims, the, the Lauren Hills. They weren't, they weren't spitting that. Right. That. So Herbie but, wasn't writing that. Herbie wasn't writing that ill shit. No. <laughs> But 
Foxy Brown being a superstar and showing out on Ashacha. The song is called Ashacha. She's 15. Yeah. She goes on the same song, uh, the same year, or the next year with Jay Z on on Ain't No Nigga, Ain't No Niggas on on um Nutty Professor soundtrack with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. The Nutty Professor movie is a smash, smash, hit movie. Nowadays, we don't even know what a smash movie is anymore. There is this. There isn't even a back then with a. Independence Day was the biggest film in '96, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, yes, maybe '97. Yeah, '96. That's what blew up Will Smith after the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. He's in the midst of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. He blows up with the fucking Independence Day to a different level. So wait, hold so, it there, hold it there. And this we got to talk about, uh, I guess, on another episode. Soundtracks in general, just that was like a big vehicle for artists. A breaking vehicle for artists, especially when Def Jam was 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 manning a soundtrack for an, for a movie, especially like the Nutty Professor stuff like that. Jay and Damon them they paid Kevin Lyles like yo, they gave him a bag of money, <laughs> like yo, put push push this. He was like yo for real. He's like nah. He said we, he said yo now nah, we want to pay you to to push this song, and that that's how that song got on that out that soundtrack. So rest is history. On the, the Nutty Professor soundtrack, and the Nutty Professor is Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is not what he was ten years prior. The mid eighties Eddie Murphy and nineties Eddie Murphy are two different Eddie Murphys, but it's still like Nutty Professor Kevin was Hart huge. Is, Nutty Professor yeah. was huge. Nutty Professor was a big deal. I, I I really can't even compare it to any movie right now. I don't know how to compare it to any. For any kid to understand right now, because there's no movie that's big. It's really TV shows and documentaries and YouTube shits and TikTok fucking, you know, viral videos. But back then, movies were a big fucking deal. And summer blockbusters were a big fucking deal. And soundtracks were a big deal. Big deal. And, and Jay-Z being on the Nutty Professor soundtrack for an Eddie Murphy movie... Eddie Murphy, who had the Boomerang soundtrack three or oh, four years prior. Classic. Eddie Murphy. Classic. Eddie Murphy was in tune with, with putting black music on, black artists on. Yeah. Everything culminated. Foxy Brown seemed like the breakout star on Ain't No Nigga because women and it was a club record and she killed it. Jay-Z was still underrated under a, another smash hit for the summer yo listen any female rapper that was spitting the way she was spitting is going to be the breakout especially in 96 that was the start because hardcore came out foxy's debut came out il nana like that that was the vehicles for 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 def jam to sign her she took off she goes platinum put it in perspective